Like all good pieces of research and like all good research projects, this developed organically where I was having a coffee with Michael Ewans, the translator and director of this performance, and we were talking about what would this poem look like if it were acted today, because there's a huge academic debate about Theocritus's idol too, also called love magic or the sorceress, and academics can't decide whether this is just a, a poem that would have been enjoyed in the fourth century BC, or whether in fact, because it's so dramatic, it was meant to be performed as a dramatic monologue. By the powers of destiny, he will knock on the gates of hell. I tell you, mistress, I keep in a box some lethal drugs for him. Samitha's heart has been broken. She fell in love with Delphus, uh, saw him walking towards her and it was love at first sight, clearly. So maybe she's a little superficial even, but um, she creates this magic to try and lure him back into her life, bind him to her, and she uses all these incredible um, potions and herbs and she's even talking about grinding a lizard into a potion. Michael Ewans translated the work from the Greek and has directed the production and my role was as a cultural historian with a research interest in the practice of magic and witchcraft in the ancient Mediterranean to uh, read and uh, work through the piece with director and actor and give advice on the various references to magic throughout the poem. The body art that you see on Samitha is a, a little bit of research that I did into symbols that appeared both in the Greek magical pap papyri and on magical amulets and, and gems that the ancient Greeks and Romans actually wore as protective amulets. Magic wheel, drag that man to my door. As I melt this wax with the help of the god, so may Delphus the Mindian melt with desire right now. It was challenging for two reasons. First of all, I wanted to produce a new translation that was accurate to the Greek and also actable. And secondly, uh, in this piece, you have a variety of tones and contrasts which had to be brought out. Sometimes she talks in a very high poetic style and sometimes she's very down to earth and everyday. But it seems as though um, Theocritus, the original author of the mime, has taken a bit of poetic license with each of the spells and he sort of blended different types of magic to really um, bring across an incredibly powerful um, emotional state. Yes, gosh, she's a complicated character, one that I've really enjoyed playing and got a lot out of because I can relate so much to her. She's obviously gone through heartbreak and it's probably the first time, by the way, that the piece is written. You can kind of tell the first hurts the most and she's in a lot of pain. It's been a wonderful experience to put this play on and it really speaks directly to some of the ideals of the Centre for 21st Century Humanities. And one of those particularly that struck a chord with us is its promotion of experimentation with knowledge and contribution to knowledge. And also we have learnt that this text and the material and the emotions that it conveys is so relevant to contemporary society. So it is very much at the heart of the Centre's contribution to knowledge. Farewell moon on your gleaming throne and farewell you other stars, attendants on the chariot of the silent night.